you can't, uh, if, you're, if you're engaged with, with people who aren't Catholic, uh, especially like people who are uh, atheist, um, uh, which I happen to encounter a lot online, uh, putting stuff out there as a Catholic priest, uh, you can't go very long uh, dialoguing with, with people in those situations um, before people bring up Pope Pius XII. And Pope Pius XII was the Pope um, during most of the era where the Nazis were in power. And the thing that is people are asking a lot about Pope Pius XII is people accuse him and say he should have done a lot more to protect people. He should have done a lot more to condemn Nazism, which began as a political movement and, of course, obviously turned into, um, turned into uh, you know, what we know the Nazis to actually be. Many people are, are, are putting that critique to Pope Pius XII in the Catholic Church. Why didn't they do more? Now, if you look at history, I could point to speeches that Pope Pius XII gave even before he was Pope, condemning the Nazi political movement. You can look at all of the things that he actually did to protect and help shelter Jewish people. You can go into all of that, but this actually, this homily is not about history. and wouldn't really matter because most people don't read history uh, anyways, especially people oftentimes that are atheistic and attacking the church. But this isn't about history or necessarily even trying to defend Pope Pius XII, which is actually pretty easy. The reason I bring up Pope Pius XII here is that many people who hate the church are always talking about him and how he should have done more and he should have spoken out. And here is one of the biggest ironies then of all time. Those same people who tell the church that they should have done more to, to combat the political movement of the Nazis, those same people also tell the church to be quiet and to stay out of politics today. The statement that I hear all the time is that the church should stay out of politics, and it is one of my least favorite. This statement, the church should stay out of politics, is a joke on many levels. First of all, it is a joke because these people who say that seem to assume oftentimes that politics is some sort of thing talked about over tea and crumpets that has no real consequence. Some people actually act like no serious decisions are made by politicians, like lives aren't saved and lost because of the decisions of politicians every day. Some people treat politics like it is just some kind of entertainment. And certainly the cable news stations play into that mindset by treating it like entertainment, because entertainment sells. Other people treat religion as the same thing, as some sort of entertainment, some sort of coping mechanism that some people happen to fancy because it makes them feel good about themselves and give them something to hope in. But let's face reality. The things that are tackled by politics and politicians are serious and have serious consequences. The things tackled by our Catholic faith are serious and have serious consequences. And so, because both things are very serious and deal with serious issues, there will be intersections. Anyone who says politics and religion shouldn't intersect doesn't understand politics, or doesn't understand authentic religion, or they don't understand either. As long as we think about politics and religion as being entertainment, or we think that politics is serious while religion is not, or we think that religion is serious but politics is a joke, then the problem with that is that we fall into a very ancient heresy that goes back to the very beginning of our church. There is a, a tendency and a heresy, actually, which separates the world into two different spheres. On one hand, we have the earthly, the things that deal with my daily life, the bodily things, the things that we see around us, the things that are of earth. And then over here in this sphere, 
people say, is the spiritual sphere, the religious sphere. Now, certainly, some religions feed into this. If you look at an example, Buddhism, Buddhism is something that I seriously pursued in college and, and, and read up on and really seriously considered the tenets of Buddhism. But they do not think of, they think of this world, the earth, as an illusion, as sort of this thing that is only there to distract us. And that we have to transcend that and just be spiritual people. Other people who are atheists say that all that really matters is the world and that the spiritual thing is over here because it's not real. This separation of the world and of our reality into two spheres that don't have anything to do with each other, the earthly and the spiritual, again, is a heresy that was condemned by the earliest church, going back to the beginning. The reason I decided that I didn't want to become a Buddhist is because I don't want any part in a religion that has nothing to say about issues that matter in my actual existence. The church speaks out, says things are wrong. Abortion is wrong. It harms the mother and father and kills the child. The church says destroying embryos for research is murder. The church says that the death penalty is always, almost always unnecessary and evil. Some apparently wish Catholicism was more like Buddhism. They seem to want the Pope and bishops and priests and Catholics and faithful Catholics to just sit on mountaintops praying and meditating and doing religious stuff. But no one says that the Nazis were just an earthly thing. And the church is a spiritual thing, so the church should stay out. No one says that. No one says, oh, well, in the, in the earthly sphere we had the Nazis, and over here we had Pope Pius XII, and it's fine that they were not together and not intersecting. No one says that. This is Pro-Life Sunday, an annual chance to have human dignity preached from every pulpit across the country, a chance to talk about the battle that is going on, and people, human people, are dying by the millions. I could preach on abortion or the destruction of embryos for their parts, but instead I want to focus on the fact that we as Catholics have every right to weigh in on things that politicians are also talking about. Because I think most here know that abortion, stem cells, and contraception are heinous, and so on and so forth. The question many of you probably wrestle with, though, is whether or not it is your right to talk about that as being wrong, as those things as being wrong. On NPR, National Public Radio, this week, I happened to overhear a Jesuit priest from Georgetown complaining about the bishops of the United States, and he said they always seem to be talking about pro-life issues and marriage being between a man and a woman. I, wanted to, I actually yelled out in my car, Hello! The bishops are talking about these issues because they're under attack. What does Father Reese, speaking from the confines of Georgetown's classrooms, want the bishops to do? Hold a press conference going over the entire catechism? That would take days, probably weeks. Could you imagine this press conference? Hi, I'm a bishop. I like to talk about everything that the church thinks is important, and I hope that you'll stay until I'm done covering every single issue. No one would stay. The bishops have to speak clearly on the specific issues in our time that are under attack. But some people say the church should stay out of politics. If you can't tell, nothing gets me more fired up. Because nothing demonstrates a more uneducated understanding of the Catholic Church than when people tell you that you should pipe down and stick to your mountaintop meditation. Know that it is because they disagree with you but have no response to the church's teaching. That's why they're asking you to go up the mountaintop, be quiet, and pray. Their comment is really ignorance masquerading as insightful political commentary. What we are sure of is that God talks about this world, this world that we live in, as a theater 
of war between good and evil. And when his son came, his son talked about this world as a theater of war between good and evil. And Christ's church, which he left behind on earth, talks about this world as a theater of war between good and evil. Pope Pius XII worked tirelessly for the Jews and fought the Nazis, and we will keep fighting for the unborn, the elderly, those on death row, even when people confusedly ask us to return to our mountaintop to pray and to keep our noses out of politics.